Hi, I'm Daniel Swain, and I'm a weather and climate scientist with the University of California Agriculture and Natural Resources, as well as the NSF National Center for Atmospheric Research. And I study how extreme weather, and I, I guess you could call them extreme weather adjacent events, uh, like floods and droughts and wildfires, are changing in a warming climate. And I also spend a lot of time engaging policymakers, decision makers, emergency responders, and the general public, really anybody who's involved, uh, even peripherally, in the Western water world. And so either directly or indirectly, I spend a lot of time thinking about and talking about dams in the American West and really dams in the broader context of the vast water infrastructure that exists in this part of the world. Uh, and that's really because uh, large dams in particular exist on most of the major watersheds in this part of the world, and they greatly uh, alter that natural hydrology of the entire region. They are, in many ways, uh, the most visible uh, product of our 20th century effort to conquer the intrinsically high climate variability of the American West using steel and concrete. And they are, I think, pretty inarguably uh, at this point, a primary driver of the population growth uh, that has occurred in this part of the world in recent decades. Uh, without dams, uh, the underlying challenges of water scarcity and water management really would have made life in now megacities like Phoenix and Las Vegas and even Los Angeles, uh, which are now home to collectively to millions and millions of people, uh, essentially impossible. Uh, yet there has also been in the same moment a growing recognition in recent years that dams can be both a blessing and a curse, depending of course on the context. And on the one hand, they've helped millions uh, uh, weather multi-year droughts, including historically unprecedented ones, and then at the other end of the spectrum, uh, some pretty extreme floods too. So keeping uh, the taps from running dry in urban areas, but also preventing places from flooding uh, that would have otherwise. The story has, of course, been different, as is always the case, in smaller towns and more rural areas that don't have the political power of the big cities to demand that water and that protection from flood risks uh, from those that are afforded by our water infrastructure and our dams. Uh, that's perhaps a story for another day. Uh, but the bigger picture is, is that we also now know that these very same dams that have offered these incredible services to modern society also come at a substantial environmental cost, not just in riverine ecosystems, but also in the much larger watersheds uh, downstream and even in some cases upstream as well, that have essentially lost their natural flows. And some of these rivers have been cut off entirely from their headwaters. I'm thinking especially about the large rivers like the Colorado, but there are others, of course, as well. And on more than one occasion, dams have proven to be a significant hazard unto themselves, either through catastrophic failure, although fortunately that's been rare in the 20th and 21st century, uh, or more recently by the threat of one. Uh, and in this case, I'm thinking specifically of the Oroville Dam crisis in Northern California in 2017, which resulted in a near cat catastrophe and, and, and ultimately in the frenzied and chaotic evacuation of around a quarter million people from the Sacramento Valley and the surrounding foothills. So what does the future hold for dams in the American West? Well, I think my sense is that the dams will continue to become uh, an even more polarized thing uh, and also themselves become more polarizing uh, in the people who talk about them and work with them in the world uh, as the climate warms. And as droughts continue to become even more intense and more prolonged, a trend that we have already begun to see in the Western US, they will serve as an even more critical lifeline for the Southwestern megacities and for agriculture in the West. So in California, of course, but also beyond. And in, as floods intensify, as we strongly expect them to do against the backdrop uh, of what we term increasing hydroclimate whiplash, so wetter wets and also drier dries, their role in protecting us uh, and protecting in particular urban areas against unwanted inundation will feature even more prominently than it did historically. Uh, 
And yet these very same dams, and especially the reservoirs behind those dams, are already becoming increasingly out of sync uh, with the climate we have today, let alone the climate uh, that we're going to have just a couple of decades from now. And so this is going to reduce the ability of dams and the reservoirs that come with them to buffer against the extremes of water scarcity on the one hand and overabundance on the other, and also potentially increase the hazards uh, that are associated with dams themselves. As mountain snowpack declines and melts over a shorter but sharper snow accumulation season, uh, as dry season storage therefore declines, uh, individual precipitation events are still intensifying. And that means that the efficacy of these structures to buffer against the scarcity, but also the hazards they might pose during a historically unprecedented flood event, both rise. And all of this, of course, is unfolding in a moment where there is increasing recognition of the environmental harms that dams can pose and in which pressure for removal of those unwanted and unneeded structures has been rising. Now, you've already seen some of those initial dam removals now take place. And I think the upshot ultimately is that we're it's clear that we're well past peak dam building in the American West. That era is now behind us for better or for worse. And while I do think it's likely we will see some new dams in the form of primarily off-stream storage uh, in, in, in less, um, less historically favored regions for dam building, I don't think we're going to see many new structures, if any, going up on the free-flowing rivers that remain in the American West. And I actually think some of the dams that you have in those systems will be deconstructed as they come uh, as they come to the end of their useful lifespan and as the pressing need to restore ecosystems becomes even more obvious. And so overall, I think that, that you know, we will see uh, that these dams will continue to serve many of the same purposes they have historically, buffering against the extremes of drought and flood, even as those extremes themselves increase, but perhaps with less absolute success than they did for much of the 20th century. And I think there could potentially be, at least in some moments, some unpleasant surprises to come in that regard. So I think overall, uh, my sense is that dams in the West will continue to be, as they long have been, a, a necessary bad thing, if you will, uh, though with which our relationship will continue to evolve uh, with the changing climate.